Good evening. My name's Tom Rayom. I'm uh, chairman of the Public Works Committee. We're having our monthly meeting here at City Hall, the first floor conference room. It's Tuesday, August 5th, uh, 6 o'clock in the evening. Uh, as we get started, I'll just go around the room for people to uh, introduce themselves. For the, we're on TV, so for the viewing public at home. So. Andrew Kirkpatrick, District 5. Dave Laspa, City Engineer. Joe Eggstead, Design Engineer. Ben J.P., Property Owner at 161 15th Avenue North. Scott Kellogg, District 3. Uh, item 2, uh, that was to have an open house uh, for the following street reconstruction project on 15th Avenue North and 150, 160, 161, 170, and 171 on 15th Avenue. Uh, with that, our, I think uh, a couple of the residents have talked with staff, uh, so I think if it's all right with everybody, we can uh, go on to item number three. And item number three is to hold public hearings and consider final resolutions for the installation of municipal improvements, which shall include curb and gutter, sidewalk, concrete driveway approaches, and permanent street surfacing on 15th Avenue North at 150, 160, 161, 170, and 171. Uh, Dave, do you want to just give yeah, a short uh, synopsis? Of okay. Um, the problem on 15th Avenue came to our the, the committee's attention on September 4th, 2012. Um, we reviewed the uh, problem. It was just basically um, two properties. Um, the committee decided to replace the curb with 50% of uh, 50% of the cost of the room replaced to the property owners. Um, I, I sent out waivers, but it didn't receive from both property owners. So therefore I requested that we go to public hearing to move forward and replace the, the sunken curve. So that's where we are now and it, it affects the five properties. We, we um, <clears throat> in the public hearing, we, we included permanent street surfacing. The intent is just to repair the curb and get it to, to drain. But as we do in all public hearings, we do a worst case scenario in case we find something in the street and then we include um, street surfacing. The street is 51 years old and the curb is 51 years old from our records. We'd like to do, if this is approved by committee, um, goes through council, we'll get it done this year and as a maintenance project that we charge against our maintenance account. When do you expect to do the street? I mean, it, it, if the street's going to be done and it's awfully old, is the street going to be done in the near future or? Well, when we started looking at the sunken curb, um, it was, we were contacted, when Joe was contacted by Water and Light that they want to know because they got an old 100 year old water main in there. So, so if it gets into our schedule, it's the closest or the soonest it would be would be two, three years in the future. Because it's, well, there's other streets that have been waiting in line. And so if these were replaced, it shouldn't affect the. No, and, 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 and if, street. if they're replaced, the property owner doesn't pay for them again. If we have to change the grade or something, we the city, the, the cost goes to the city. Okay. Or if the utilities underneath would be damaged, that would be at our expense. Yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure. <laughs> if it's that old, it's not doing it. 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 Not doing We thought about it going the full length of the street, but we've got a backlog of other streets, and this is an arterial. It's a local street, so we. The rest of the street don't look too bad for being 51 years old. Okay, I just... It's just right in front of my house. It's sunk down about 8, 10 inches on both sides of the gutter. Have you ever used mud jacking? I, I used to work for a mud jacker, and we did curves in Milwaukee when I was in college, and we just looked up the curves. And I, I mean, if, if three years out or four years out, we might be doing the street, and the cost of mud jacking might be a 
portion, and just a small percentage of it. I don't know how that works. It's been paved over many times. Already. Yeah, and it's sunk pretty it's well. I, my deck you usually only will bring an inch or two up. It's been the, the neighbor across the streets lived there for 51 years, and he says it's been sunk in like that since it's put in. <laughs> oh, okay. And I've lived there for five years. Okay. And we're, we're the ones who have got all this going because I have four kids, and they would go ride their bikes through the water. And in the wintertime, <laughs> it freezes over. And just this last winter, my older boy uh, was standing on the ice that it made because it's probably set, it goes way out to the road, too, the ice does. He was standing there, and my, his older sister wanted to slide on the ice and slid into him. He chipped one of his front teeth in half, oh. right across half of it, the bottom half is gone. Hopefully it was a baby too. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I guess with that, uh, I'll open the for, uh, portion of uh, the meeting to the public hearing. Uh, I will uh, ask people uh, call three times for people opposed to it, and then three times for people in favor of it. And then it'll be turned back to the committee for uh, their recommendation of what to do. So, is there anyone here that's opposed to the project? Anyone present that's opposed to the project? Anyone present that's opposed to the project? Is there anyone here present, anyone present that is in favor of the project? Here? Yes. Anyone else here that's in favor of the project? Anyone here else here that's in favor of the project? Hearing and see no, seeing and nobody, I'll uh, close that portion of the public hearing and we'll go back to the committee. Do you have any more questions or anything of the staff or so at this time the neighbor we're looking at um 50 percent of the special assessment or, or no a special assessment 50 percent of the special assessment on on like in the hearing we went back to the normal rate but the committee had granted 50 percent on the curb um if you want to do that again we we, uh, we, we can do another that. motion i think would have to be made Right. Back, to back to the full thing now. Yeah, right, because they didn't sign up. Well, one property owner signed up, and Mr. Chafee didn't sign up, so I went back to the normal hearing rate, but the committee can change it back to 50 if they see fit. Okay. I guess, how how do you feel about that, or where are you at with that? Well, I was, I was first told, trying to get the committee to go for $300, for everything, and they said no to that, and then I got the uh, the fifty percent, and I I was under the assumption that if I didn't sign the waiver, that it would go through, and if I did, then it would come to this. So uh, I was I didn't read the paperwork properly. <laughs> so if fifty cent fifty percent is all that can be done, that's Fine with me. It needs to be. It needs to get done. It looks horrible and it's dangerous. See, what? Are we in discussion? Or? Yeah, it's a little bit here. We can have. Yeah. Okay. My my concern is special assessments. Um. I think it, we're we're kind of caught in the middle of this. It seems to me our practice has been the special assessments that the property owners should pay the full thing. That has been the best, best practice, right? For, for the, you know, the vast majority of, the, well, the property owner doesn't actually pay 100% for the curb. By ordinance, they pay two thirds of the cost right now. And, and it's, it seems to me that we need to create the some history and practices. Now, I, now I have a problem with this because he was told at one time that it would be 50%, you know, and then, and then now we're going 100%. So it's kind of like, if it was told at one time 50%, um, you know, and now we say 100, it's a problem. But it seems to me that with special assessments, we need to be consistent because you showing up and then someone 
next week showing up is at 100 percent you know what i'm saying and, and so it has to be we have to develop some history and practice so that um i'm sen i'm sensitive to every individual you know i wouldn't want a special assessment and, and say you know but the thing is i think we have to be consistent so it's that fine line one is I think we have to be consistent, but the other thing I think he was told at one time, 50%. So I'm kind of in a, I'm hemming and hawing here, going back and forth. But um, I think for in the future we need to create something that's really nailed down. Um, so I just wanted to get that off. <laughs> no, <that's, laughs> and I believe they did the 50% is because you can. It's been laid over how many times? So it's been sunk down for a long time, and I've only lived there for five years. Okay. I think that's why they did the fifty percent because it's was has been been like that for a long time. Right. This thirty six hundred is this representative at one hundred percent or fifty percent? Well, the um, yeah, I, see, the curb is always subsidized at sixty six. The property owner pays sixty six percent. So it would reduce to 50, or if you want to do half of the assessment rate, I don't know. I don't know. We the committee just said 50 percent. They didn't qualify if it's half of the assessment rate or half of the total cost. Yes, another thing. Yeah. And so, what's our policy? Yes, I, I asked the, the total cost. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. um, so the cost. Uh, without a requester to do the work, if we were to determine or deem that that work needs to be done, it goes through what process? If it's def if it's defective curb and gutter, it always has to go to public hearing. Sidewalk, we we the engineering department can just notify the people on sidewalk and get that repaired. But curb and gutter, you and then they get paid billed for the sidewalk at 100 percent. Yep, if they get notified. Right. right. Okay. And then on the curb, as curb as they, sure I understood the they pay two thirds the cost on curb and gutter. The city subsidizes one third the cost automatically. Automatically. That's what's on these assessment sheets. That's the standard oh, rate for everybody yeah, that's in the what city. I was wondering. Okay. All right. Uh, if we go, I guess if we go back, we look at a motion. And this is coming back to September fourth, two thousand twelve. Motion by Hope Cam, seconded by Mr. Yolm to replace curb and gutter property owner responsible for 50% of curb and gutter replacement. I guess I, I guess I would kind of read that as a total cost, but I mean, I guess it was your, That's what you, I thought. you seconded it, you know, so I wasn't sitting on the committee at that time, so I can't speak for it. I think it was, or that was my thought. That's kind of, I mean, that's the impression that I got from as my recollection goes from from the discussions around it and and I'm, I'm right there with you I totally and I'm fairly certain I was one of the nay votes but I mean it's it's back and it's back and you know and all this and I mean he's been told 50% you know they've been told 50% I, I kind of feel like we have to we have promised a 50% we've it's been expressed a 50% we have to stick by that and in the future yeah you know I mean this is what it is, you know, and n not to say that it can't be a case by case basis for certain things, but you know, in this case, this is one of those case by case basis. So yeah. somebody in the past has already, you know, kind of tied our hands in, in some yeah. respects here. And, um, so I, I think we have to have to honor, Initial. you know, as, as this committee, what a past committee has already done, and it's only been a couple of years, so it's not like we're talking about something 30 years ago, you know. See, yeah, that's it. But then I think. We need to, as a council, oh yeah, decide exactly what is it that we're going right. to approve or not, and we really, that's just the way it is. Right, and, and I mean, in the future, you know, like, like if something comes in here in the future and it's a similar situation, you know, two blocks over or whatever, um, uh, to me, it's, you know, that's a special assessment, that's what it is, and that's kind of the way I've always yeah. treated it, you know. But, and it starts now. I yeah. mean, whenever it starts, it starts. Right. You know, um, I've always been on board that boat. Yeah, I'm <laughs> also, I agree it's, with you. <laughs> it's probably, it's probably, I guess, if uh, uh, an item for it to refer to the to the council, if uh, you know, uh, you would want to, or as a committee, refer it to the council to uh, take the issue up, um, special assessments and that. I mean, and I would just 
a comment. I think you raise a valid point the only con with the fact that there was previous deals or whatever cut, particularly on this issue because it's still at the, at the body. But I think part of why it's not gotten too far is because we have a process and a policy related, an ordinance related to special assessments. And the moment we give, I mean, it's kind of the same, you know, all in the same room for the last discussion, last committee. The minute we, we compromise that process, Ever, forever forward, there's a potential that those could be brought into question if somebody can test them in the future. So right. that's my only concern, and, and I don't disagree with your comment about because I mean they were given some discount, and unfortunately, it just never it I don't, never passed the council, right? That was or was no, the agreement no, was not signed. He had to sign a waiver. Yeah. Okay. He never signed a waiver. Got you. So, um, but I guess at, at present, as I understand, a third of the assessment, the total cost will be built will be subsidized already right. by the city. Right. And that's our policy, right? Our policy right. exists that we'll pay a third of it, two thirds goes to the property owner. I mean, you know, I don't want to be unfair to the person that no, no. was given it, something. You know, and I, and I guess to go to go further into the, the whole thing, I mean, if if uh, the gentleman across the street from me, you know, he's lived there for 60 years or whatever, and he's like, oh, no, God, they, they came out here, they replaced it, it was good for a year, and after that, she just started dropping, you know. I mean, to me, that speaks that it was shoddy work that was done 50 years ago or bad soil I mean there's you know, there, there are many different soil. things you know realistically it, it should have been something that was caught long ago and, and I mean to overlay the thing and chip seal the thing and chip seal the thing and chip seal the thing the city knew there was a problem so I, I hate yeah. the word the use the word negligence but I mean we knew there was an issue you know and I, I think maybe that's where that that issue of the 50 percent I'm not going to speak for the I don't, think it, I don't think it did any work knowing there was an issue it didn't work because the street was part of its chip ceiling maintenance right, program, so right. it wasn't necessarily the drainage issue. I mean, I can no. I talked to one on by my street by oh, yeah, Chestnut, yeah. and I already you know you see that right. one. It's, it should, it's, I, I guess it's worse it, than this one. I, right. I mean, I'm wondering. Why I guess they it should have been. Ice it it should have been on a, so a replacement or a repair street. schedule thirty years. I just ago. don't want to get you know. precedent set, and then no. we're starting no. to do this in yeah. the future. So I, you know, because I've already referred one on that subject, and I'm just. But I was still just going to mention. If I recall correctly, I think that was part of the discussion two years ago was that 50% was because it's, it's an abnormality in the street. It's something that typically doesn't occur, whatever the cause might be. And that's why, you know, it was cut in half. Was because See, that, I feel better yeah, about that. So, so future ones would be mm -hmm. full, but if there was, you know. It's not normal degradation, but yet right. the actual cause is unknown. Right, yeah. and maybe that's something that if we want to refer it back to to the body, that we might consider making that type of language for for future cases. Yeah. You know, and maybe I don't use this as some sort of a template on that. I don't know, but but we have to identify correct. specifically if it's like we uh, chestnut. We we're doing that road, and we get ten percent off because that used to be a highway. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. there was a lot of wear on that street when it was a highway, so we compensated and said 10% off. Right. And I feel comfortable with that rather than full assessment. And then, uh, but, and what you're saying here, that that's probably why they said 50%. But I think in the future, whatever we decide here, but in the future we have to come up with some things and we have, we're in agreement mm -hmm. on that. So. Well then committee, what do we, what motion do we want to make? Uh, I would make a motion to to approve the resolution for the installation of improvements uh, abutting the properties listed at a rate of 50% of normal assessment. That is that just for the curb and gutter? That's what all that was approved on last time. Just curb and gutter. Yeah. Yeah. Sidewalk from what? Right. Stay as close to this. That's and, and you know. honoring the committee and correct, mm -hmm. and it's honoring the, uh, the resident as well. That way, I would second that. All right. Uh, if there's no further discussion on the motion, the committee will vote. All those in favor, respond by aye. 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 Opposed, aye. Seven.
number number four. I voted in favor. Oh, okay. okay. if you didn't hear me, so I, 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 I just I know thought, I was quiet, I thought it was so. unanimous. Yeah. Okay. Uh, number four: Review and award to the low qualified bidder the 17th Avenue South Boring and Jack and contract. So we didn't. We didn't receive any any bids uh, for that contract. Just letting them know, Tom, that the report will go to the council meeting oh, in case he wants yes. to. Um, Two weeks from tonight's council the council meeting, uh, this report, public works, will be taken up there. Uh, if you can make it, the council starts at 6 o'clock. Can't promise what time it will be. It shouldn't be too long, usually, to get to these. But, uh, so Could be late on that Tuesday if we get a little yeah, annexation and everything else. Later. So don't hurry to be there. At <laughs> Let's say maybe, Unless you want to watch I won't tell you a time in case of, you can watch it from home actually, then you can time it. We're close enough to be able to get the city hall at well, least in time. I mean, you guys agreed to this, and they had already agreed to this before, so most likely it'll go through. It's it's been a, we've had We've got three here, so there's yeah, five more on the council. And the the ones the individuals listed, uh, Ho Camp and and um, Nash and Nash Young are gone. Young, yeah. I mean, we had almost close to a fifty percent changeover. Chad was. Yeah, Chad is one. So I mean, we've had probably about a forty percent changeover on the council in the last about two years. Um, I don't anticipate that it would go any different than it would here tonight. But we can talk to your alderman again too, Chad uh, World, yeah. on the yeah. nature just to make just to see where he's at, make sure he hasn't changed his position or, or whatever. And so, so you know our feeling on it. Yeah. I suppose if it goes different, then we could raise an issue and ask it to be table. I mean, if and, and so if you're not there. I don't, you know, just to honor you, right? So, so a little bit of this long too. I mean, yeah, I wanted to another month or. Sure. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. So, do you want to rebid this then, Joe? Yeah, that's what we're looking at doing. Um, we did co contact the uh, contractors to kind of find out or the plan holders why they didn't bid. Um, there's all sorts of you know, possible reasons why they didn't bid. Um, but uh, our plan is to, well, we'd like to rebid it for September 4th. We have to bid open for the next public works meeting. Well, well, hopefully that'll be, we can draw. That'll be kind of line. quick to get that done. And yeah, okay. Well, I'd move that we rebid the project. And if possible, to have it back at the September public works meeting. I'd second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor respond by aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Item 5 uh, Proposed bike trail extensions for the bike route network as part of a complete streets program as follows A. Install a bike trail on the closed section of Railroad Street from 1st Street to 100 feet west. B, widen the sidewalk in Veterans Memorial Park from East Grand Avenue to the River Wall. C, install a bike trail on Oak Street from 20th Street to the State Highway 54, the crossing at Peach Street. D, install a bike trail connection from 1st Street to the East Side Recreation Trail at Drake Street. Dave? Um, yeah. I didn't hand these last time we met on when the committee approved the bike network for complete streets. These are short sections that we'd like to put in to make connections to the streets. Um, the first one, Railroad Street was closed because of the uh, gates, lights and gates that were put in. The DOT said it wouldn't be safe having Railroad Street. We would just, I think it's about a 50 foot piece of bike trail, we put what's grass now. Um, Veterans Memorial Park, there's a section, well we have the Grand Avenue Bridge now where well, that's our bike trail crossing and we're going to run them through Veterans Memorial Park. There's a piece of sidewalk next to uh, East Grand Avenue at 2nd Street that's only 5 feet wide and the minimum for a bike trail is an 8 foot wide sidewalk so we'd, we'd uh, double the width in there. Um, the C is uh, I guess if the Aspirus development is approved, this would we would work with them 
originally we had it coming through on Peach Street before we moved the proposed development. And last night, the Planning Commission, I believe they stated they would work with us to get the bike trail around, and then there's going to be signals at Peach Street where the biker could cross. So I don't anticipate any cost at this time for C. I think it would be part of the Spires development. Mm -hmm. And then D is, um, I guess, came up at Park and Rec. Uh, by the, by that, that from, uh, where the old pool site was. Legion Park. Legion yeah, Park, yeah. yeah. Legion, I couldn't think of it. Yeah, Legion Park. The trail goes down into Legion Park. And there's been people that want to stay on, not go down there, stay on the road, and then go back on the park again. So we thought we'd do a connection at Drake Street where we could come across people walking on Drake Street, come across, and then connect into the, the park. Um, we try to do what we can this year with what maintenance funds we have, um, sidewalk maintenance funds, what we have available, and what we can't do would just do it next year's. Maintenance funds. Mayor, one question on the uh, Drake Street idea. There's a significant grade difference there, isn't there? Right, the right. That's why we'd have to, um, yeah, Joe Drew would go on the hill there. <laughs> yeah, I just, I, you know, I just, I, I question yeah. if that or if there's another spot. I mean, what about I closer, closer up the, or uh, um, closer south? Closer to the CS. Yeah, yeah so we, we, we'd like to still cross at Drake, but we maybe we'd stay on top of the hill until we flattened out and then cut over. Because there is, and let me, let me pull up a map just to see, because I forget, is there sidewalk at all along first? Not at all. I'm sorry, the west side of first, side. that was all removed. Yeah, and that was okay. where some of the other feedback we got too was that that should have been. It, yeah, it's flatter when you get further down, but we thought Drake Street because we have a crossing there for for pedestrians, so we thought that would be a good place. We can parallel the street and then when we cross the street. Oh, why is that road now? Is it, I mean, is, is it wide enough to just put the trail right on the road there? Well, it's, it's marked right on the road, but the, I guess people want to... Yeah, the, the people trail. at the committee meeting or at the plan, or, uh, Park and Rec Commission meeting said for bicyclists that are on first, get this straight, um, because there's no sidewalk on the west side at all like there had been previously in front of the parking stalls, mm -hmm. um, the bicyclists that don't want to use the park um, would, be using, um, would be using the street. street. And there's no way to get from the street and back onto the bike trail to go back to, into the roundabout area. Right. So unless you go through the park. So that was the issue. There was no connection up there. That's ridiculous for me to even ask that or propose that. Never mind. <laughs> I just, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know how to, to dice that one. I guess I wasn't thinking, I'm trying to think of where the committee was really concerned about this. Because there's sidewalk on the east side, I think the feedback really was further down Oh, further down from Drake. Yeah, and I do too, but you know, I guess we walked. Well, you were there, right? Yeah, if we were over, went over there, I think we could. And this doesn't really give us a lot to look at. Me, you, uh, you guys can can see this. Well, I mean, what's here? No, what's here's here's the, the, um, the here's the white arpent house. The trail comes up right here, and it's first. I know there's a crossing. Along. Along. So there's no so curb cut there. Right. So it really is a curb cut. Yeah, how is, how bad is it to just? That, that's all. Well, I mean, that would be. The solution, <laughs> yeah, I think so. Here's where it was. So where that Arpen House is, there's the Victorian. Oh, right. But the curb cut I think was there in the committee because the oh that old driveway oh, that was that's there. right here. This one. Yeah, you got it. That's okay. Yep, that's what it is. Yeah. So I guess that's more of a curb cut, less of asphalt than anything else. But I see what you're saying now. There's no crossing. Mm -hmm. There's no crossing there. Yeah, so it was more of, not of a pedestrian piece, it was just access from is, the street. I, I guess, is it already, are bike lanes marked on the road right now? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so why don't we just cut the curb and put a 
piece of asphalt in there or whatever it is. And you know, because I mean, what, what are you what are you talking here? You're talking 200 feet, if that. Oh, not even that. You know, 150 feet on the road. You know, I mean, it's, will we will we uh, be looking though at uh, marking it as a crosswalk, Dave? Well, if we, we that's why we started with yeah, Drake, if you were going to mark it as a crosswalk, I and mean, we wouldn't have, have to, to have it handicapped, uh, yeah, accessible. We, so. we wouldn't have to have anything on the other side. Then it would just go into the assistance. Yeah. We'd end up with more curb cuts. If we... Although, if you just cut the back of the curb for the bikes, so you put asphalt to the back of the, where the back of the curb was. We could, well, we have to follow our own ordinance, so we have to put in a concrete approach, but. Well, you would keep the concrete approach, right? Your concrete yeah. basin would still be there. I I can talk, I'm just wondering if the guys use that for maintenance, if they're gonna need it back again, we could. Yeah, because there's probably no drive their access point to get back into this, you'd have to. Yeah, by, by the dam they can get. Oh, the dam and then close towards down about the spot. What's at the bottom of the hill? I've driven that so many times, I should know for sure. As far as the bike mark, trail mark, on the street, where is it? Oh, it goes right into the roundabout. It goes, does it go around it? No, it just kind of keeps saying it goes <laughs> off. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's that's I drive that there, so There's much. special bike ramps to get back on the sidewalk just before the roundabout. Mm -hmm. Okay. I was there and heard what was said, but it just, is it, is it, and it's going through my mind, is it worth it to do? <laughs> so at the roundabout, there's a special special curb cut for, for just bike ramps that's, non, that's not designed or proposed, intended to be for walking pedestrian. Right. Okay, there's so there's actually a handicap ramp further up for pedestrians. Okay, so then what's the difference here? To just make that a dedicated, intended bike curb, bike curb or cut. Approach or something, right. yeah. And I think that's kind of what the committee, or maybe not the committee, people at the commission meeting mm -hmm. suggested, because it's those, it's bicyclists that don't want to go to the park, because mm -hmm. the people that are using the path are mostly walkers. pedestrian walkers, yeah. you know, and, and... And they're going to climb a hill if they want to climb exactly, a hill, you know. Yeah. Because it's not an issue if you're coming, if you're heading north, right, because you're it's on a, the other side right. of the street already. It's you're not going to cross there to get, you're going to cross... Somewhere else. It's only an issue if you're on a bicycle and you have to follow the rule of the road as you lay yeah, and it's direction just, of travel. It's, it's more of yeah, it's more of those that don't want to go down through the park. It's heading south. It's a bicyclist on the street southbound. They have a way to get off there, but they don't have a way, by the dam. They just want to get a way to get off. Right. I mean, and I mean, I if, they, it. it's not if like they're it's if they're coming up if they're coming up the river going north on a bicycle, they drop into the curb cut. Or they they pause there. They stop. Check both. You know, they could check both ways and just bicycle across the road to That's the other side. That's only if they want to get to the park. And it's not it's not those. It's the, it's the um, right, west it's the, side. Right, right. So and that's, and that's the what I'm east saying. side have no issue. That's not the right. approach for them really. Right. Because they're not going to go through the park. But we will, there's a crosswalk up mm -hmm. by um, SS Peter and Paul. Right. So it's only those that want to get that are heading north on the bike. Trail yep. and want to get off at the street, right onto the lane, bike lane. Which that you know, just a dedicated bicycle curb cut would do that, mm -hmm. and allow it to happen northbound or southbound. Right. Yeah, because you don't have a you have a sidewalk on the east side, but you don't have a bike wreck trail on that side. So you know the traffic is right. Be on the west. And I guess if you make it big enough, then you provide an. Uh, an ease of access for a city crew to do whatever they need to do down below as well. One more. Mm -hmm. And I think that's all the commission uh, mm -hmm. people at the commission meeting were talking about. It's really, evening. just one, I think, because you, there is one, as you said, up by the dam, and there's one. Is there one by by um, what's the street by the by the boundary that we um, vacated? Oh, Oliver. Yeah, Oliver. There's, there's, there's an access there, right? People can get. Yeah, I thought there was an access there. Yeah, so it was really just the one. Yeah. But that's I just when I saw that I thought, oh, that might I can see what you're trying to do though. You're trying to get to a, a crossing there, mm -hmm. and that's not the I guess that wasn't the commission. Mm -hmm. the not that said, evening wasn't yeah. the part of the discussion. But I'm glad that we discussed it. We got a solution. We got a solution with Blueberry. Right
I had another question. Yes, um, Mayor. Um, this widening of the um, path, have you identified how much of it needs to be wider? Uh, yeah, it's actually the piece from the east from East Grand Avenue to where the trail gets near the river wall. The rest of it is it is over eight feet. It's that first kind of like S curve in there, and then we have to do some work on the curve there to get enough width through there. So I, I, I and estimate you know, 60 feet, and probably 100 foot of curve maybe. So it's or a sidewalk and it's from here to. So about the river. No, bank, it's right? actually only here to here as well. And this is it. fine. Yeah, the rest of this is all eight feet. So one thing I would suggest, if you don't mind, Tom, nope. um, on the subject that <laughs> there's some idea that we would incorporate um, permanent picnic tables down there. The one we got to move them. We had one stolen. I don't know why. Once so we want to steal a public the city park. But I mean, somebody pointed it out. You didn't bring any more benches down. I said yes, but one literally got legs. Um, so <laughs> I'm just wondering if there's any way to accomplish that project. Um, you know, we can go to park and rec for it. But I just wanted to know specifically where it was. You can check. Um, Right. You know, just to, if we're gonna widen it in some area, we could just pour a slab right away there for it to get it done. But, oh, for the yeah, if oh, we, we'd have slab. to do the picnic <laughs> yeah, table I see what you're saying. off of the eight feet. Yes, right. But I mean, there's there's some couple of spots there depending on where the grade is. I would say we'd like to look at it, all of it and and see where we can accomplish that. But I see what you're saying. It's a yeah, permanent structure. Oh I don't know. Because <clears throat> right now we got a moving and mall. It's just solve our problems <laughs> Car, um, picnic benches at park lunch by the river it's been a sore subject i don't know if you've gotten if you've been down to lunch by the river there are three residents that are really passionate about it so that's what i would and are you gonna you do concrete again yeah because the rest of it's concrete and it's so six foot now five foot five foot now so would yeah. you just add three feet or do you have to no oh, well we pro we might probably add another five because we just that's the normal width of sidewalk. It put it, it. It's recommended ten feet minimum of eight feet. So okay. let's take a look at it before we move forward. Yeah, it, just to just I wanted to make that comment suggestion that we want to look at. Not disagreeing with Quebec. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> those are my comments. I just wanted to talk about those. I'm thinking about those. <laughs> So when uh, I, I guess like that project we looked at doing it. Um, we try to do it this fall, um, fall if we have yeah. funds available in our maintenance accounts. So otherwise, if we get her get her again first thing in spring, because we've got quite a bit of marking yet. I got to put the work order out for. I, I, I guess with that one, and I don't know if the other ones do we need us. A certain motion if if the committee wants to go forward for each I, one of these. The well, I just put a not. general motion if you guys okay. if it's okay with you that I wouldn't need a motion for each one. Okay. I'll make a motion to uh, accept the proposed bike um, extensions as listed. Would you? I would second that with uh, an addendum to. The, the change to item was at D as yeah. discussed. I'm sorry. All right, a motion a second. Uh, anybody have any further things to say or questions? No, other than thank you for the work you guys have been doing on this complete streets and bike marking and all of that in the last number of meetings. I know it's Extra. We're getting there, I think. So. Yeah, we are. I think we're getting much closer to a I don't know what the whole final product. Product. I don't know whatever final is, but it's yeah, uh, written. Yeah, there you go. There you go. We'll get the permanent picking tables on there, and then they can celebrate. Yeah. All right. If there's nothing else, committee will vote. Uh, all those in favor, respond by aye. 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 All those ties have. Item six. Solicitation for engineering design services for the intersection modification project at 8th Street South and East Grand Avenue. Um, we're to the point, we've got the state municipal agreement in for the reconstruction of 8th Street. I have been notified by DOT that um, we can select, uh, solicit a, for a consultant engineering design. The way we do these STP urban projects, we work with uh, 
the consulting engineer, but we don't have the software or the training to put it into the form that the DOT wants it. So we've been, since probably 2000, after 2003, we quit doing it all ourselves and we have a consultant package it for us. We do the preliminary, we do the survey, we do the preliminary design, and then the consultant does the environmental and the, and the design and packages it for the DOT. Our schedule is, uh, um, we, we, we're proposing this and then, then I think it's the next item, yeah, in this grand, we're, we're, we're proposing to do is pick the same consulting engineer. Although they were originally planned to be constructed together, third to eighth, and then the intersection of eighth and east grand, but they're two different pots of money. And eighth and east grand has to be done by 2016, where uh, the earliest I think we may be able to get back into 2018 for east grand from third to eighth. That's what our Cedar Corp, our management consultant, told us that, that it's a possibility. So, so if you use the same consultant, it'll be consistent. Right, right, yeah. So then we don't have to go through the solicitation twice, which is, it's it's hard to pick because they're all great consultants. Right? And the DOT doesn't allow you to pick them on cost. There's a, I think it's the Brookings Law or something. You have to pick them on qualifications. Cost is not part of your selection process. Since there's going to be a, a difference in a number of years between each project, is that going to is that going to produce an issue with you know the, the consulting between the two projects? I, I don't think it would have an effect. The consultant would would just space everything out the way they would need to. And okay. The trick so it, is, I guess, the same consultant, so we got to right. I, I guess I was thinking that they were just gonna, you know, do both of them right at the same time, and then we'd have the other project sitting, you know, in a binder right over here waiting for us to get to it. And if that would cause an issue, having that thing sit there for like two years or three years or however long it'd have to be. No, I mean, usually what what happens is the consultant gets them in the last minute for <laughs> each one of them. Okay. Yeah, they, so it's going to come down to the to the to the time scheduled. Right. Okay. okay. Yeah. They, they. Yeah. If you've ever, well, I'm dealing with the state on safe routes to schools, and yeah. I'm just making it to every I one of their. Poor guy into retirement. Then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Little I, hair I got left. <laughs> I just don't want to see us. You know, have this yeah, really good. You know, that, this really <laughs> perfect plan, and all of a sudden, you know, the law changes, and you know, we have to redo the entire consulting thing because the law changed. Two years after we did it, we had it scheduled three years down the line or whatever. No, usually, well, you're usually always locked in once you sign okay. these agreements that they don't do anything retro. Okay. And the state's really driving the um, eight, uh, East Grand piece because that's to be urban, right? And we, right. if we wanted to fund it, we could do it any time. That's just we get eighty percent state and federal money to do that project. Right, yeah, and we have to follow all their rules and requirements. But unless the schedule, for whatever reason, changes on STP or a project falls off above us or something, that may what's the, what's the STP or urban that's the um, service, service transportation yeah. urban program Is for municipalities. So first street and roundabout was STP urban, so we qualified for if we, well, we had to follow the state requirement yeah. guidelines, which we pretty much have to anyway. Like, yeah, most of the stuff. If by right away we have to uh, at all times, but as street reconstruction, if it's local funds, we can we can get away with not following the state. But as soon as there's any state or federal funds in, it doesn't matter how much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's a, every municipality. So we've met. We meet what every year. Score those or uh, every well about every, <laughs> two, every years. two years. Okay, yeah. where we just uh, all the towns and villages come to the city and we kind of jockey for projects and you know we get them to agree that we're going to fund this. I mean that was kind of what we got their agreement on. I mean they all have wants and needs too, but they is it based? I mean I'm sure there's a lot of criteria. Certain, certain money available. Primarily due to like 
age condition and usage or I mean is there other factors involved like costs I think we get how much a year and then yes. we have to save up I mean the fund has to so it's not like because six hundred thousand a year it's not like because it's uh would be considered a historical oh. avenue or something like that because it we could apply for that separately but not as the okay. urban okay. we could do that okay. separately I'll move on number six for it to solicit for engineering design services for the intersection modification project at 8th Street South and East Grand. I'll, Sorry. I'll, I'll second. Oh, okay. We have a motion and a second. Uh, if there's no further discussion, committee will vote. All those in favor respond by aye. 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 Uh, seven. Solicitation for engineering design services for the reconstruction of East Grand Avenue between 3rd Street South and 8th Street South. I'd, if there's no questions, I'd move that we do it. Sorry. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Uh, for solicitation for engineering design services for the reconstruction of East Grand Avenue between 3rd Street South and 8th Street South. I'm just going to, I guess, or make a comment, maybe get something back, maybe, and then we'll vote. Uh, it's, uh, the condition of that street, is there anything that we can do? I mean, if it's going to go out to 2019 or something, is there any chance we could, an overlay or something that would get us that far out? We could, I don't need an answer right now, but no, something but to throw out. To talk about that. Because the condition of that is. street, if we're looking, that's five years old, yeah. 2019. Mm -hmm. um, Plus those concrete panels seem to be varying degree of yeah. great do, it, quality it, of concrete. I mean, they're all not, they're they're all the same. put a lot of money into yeah. you know, saw cutting yeah. parts out and putting concrete back in. I think in we that, pretty uh, much kept that to that cold uh, cold patch. or Yeah, we, we've done patch. some hot patch, patch. Hot patch on it. So I don't know. I guess uh, yeah. it may be something at least worthwhile to work in, and we have an answer to it. Let's focus on the worst. Yeah, that's a good point. It was part of that um, concrete blow-up conversation we talked about over the winter. You know, mm -hmm. some of these streets, particularly that one, where it, the stuff is shifting, and you're getting a lot more wear and tear on it. Okay, uh, on the item there, uh, if there's no further questions or anything, uh, committee will vote. All those in favor, respond by aye. 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 Those guys have it. Item 8 is to install a no parking restriction on Oak Street, the north side, from 3rd Street to 4th Street. Um, this was well, one that w when we had met with the church and uh, United Way on, on Oak, we uh, took the parking off the, the north side, put it on the south side, narrowed the street so we could do the, the streetscape. We just didn't get it done. Our guys reminded me that we didn't have an ordinance yet on here. We got the street almost done. The street lights have to go in yet, but we didn't have the ordinance done yet. So this would complete the project and the federal parking on the other side. And that was part of the original agreement of the property, right. neighboring property owners and others. Mm -hmm. right. yep. Motion to approve is present. Second. Second. Uh, if there's no further discussion, the committee will vote. Uh, on item number eight, uh, all those in favor respond by aye. 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 Opposed, ayes have it. Number nine is to uh, remove the no parking restriction on the east side of 4th Street North between East Grand Avenue and Oak Street. Um, this exists as a 40 foot street, and I maybe past traffic patterns we kept it as no parking, but we couldn't figure out why. We couldn't just 40 foot wide street handles parking on both sides and it would help United Way in the church. So take that uh, from basically just push it from here to here. Yeah, and then mm -hmm. that, yeah, the space that we took away, then they had yeah, some. Yeah, exactly. Work. Yeah. I make a motion to remove the no parking restriction on the uh, east side of 4th Street North uh, between East Grand and Oak Street. I'll second. I actually went down there today again to make sure I had it right in my mind for this evening. Is that the uh, actually meet parking lot right by the and got out and looked at it, uh, so it was fresh in my mind again for tonight. So, and it looks at I, 
road looks so wide that you're mm-hmm. parking. Yeah. Well, it was in such rough shape before that I don't think anybody. Ima- I mean, I know really? yeah. there's so much. It looks wider now. It looks it wider. Wasn't, yeah. um, it wasn't reconstructed any wider, right? No. I mean, I, I just today like again, I, same thing. It's because I'm in the nice and flat. Well, it's perfect. Nice yeah. and white. <laughs> and with the exception and... of the manhole, which I keep forgetting to ask, what's the story on that? It's a manhole. Do you see that with the yeah. cones around yeah. it? Yeah. It's a Solaris manhole. Oh. They had um, there was some grade <laughs> differential there, or something that happened. Uh, so they had ordered a new casting while American was in to pave. Um, and we made the decision to go ahead and pave because that it's right in the start of the intersection. Yeah. So in five years, when East Grant comes through, it's going to get tore back up anyway. Okay. So, you know, a small asphalt patch uh, now will be, it will be gone in a few years. So. Thanks for bringing it up, Mayor. I did see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, I had a feeling it was a similar situation. Here, that's what happened on the bike path. It twisted, right? Or it, Turn. Yes, right something to do with the work we interviewed yeah. was doing there. And, just, yeah. and then one other question, then if you don't mind, Tom, the Oak Street intersection. Can you put parking uh, beyond, not all the way down fourth past Oak Street, too far, but are you able to put in additional spaces? I mean, there's a cross, there's two crosswalks there, so it might only be one space. Yeah, we have to, by state law, we have to stay 15 feet away from a crosswalk. So that's why we stopped at at Oak, because we didn't want to. That would narrow through that turn or something as well? Uh, It's the same width, but we just just thought it would be safer to try it this section. How many feet are there now? Um, Let's see, that's 30, it's about 40 feet. 40 feet. See, 30, you're losing 30 with double crosswalk, so you really, you need about a minimum 20 feet for a parking space in between there, so. Put a smart car there. <laughs> I just, you know, it's like one extra space, because there is not a lot of small parking yeah. in that area. I would just Compact suggest maybe car, we've got a big truck there. in there. Okay, but but you, you can get, again, look you at can get north a spot the between, the, yeah, between the two, um, two crosswalks. I see exactly what you're saying. You had a motion in that down, Dave? Yep. Uh, committee will vote on that then. All those in favor respond by aye. 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 Opposed, aye. So. Number 10, study the intersections of 3rd Street and East Grand Avenue and 2nd Street and East Grand Avenue to reconfigure lanes due to change to a four way stop intersection. No, you can talk oh, about it. I'm, I guess I'm here. We've talked about it a lot, and we've never gotten it to an agenda. And I, I we were meeting on because we review the agendas every every month. And I thought, you know, let's get it on the agenda, especially because we have bike lane stuff we've been talking about. So, I think all of us have driven it many, many times. Some people have probably experienced some. There's a lot of resident confusion there after the stoplights were removed, and so I guess we put study on there because. We probably want to do it right if we're going to do pavement markings. We probably wouldn't do any any work there related to islands unless it necessitates it. Probably it'd be more of pavement marking. So that would be the only um, suggestion I had. Because it, once you remove the the signals, you've got left turn lanes. Well, rarely do you put left turn lanes at um, at four way stops. So it's just confusing, and especially because it's more pedestrian. You want it to be more pedestrian friendly down there. If you get multiple cars stacked up, you don't always see the pedestrians crossing it. Much about the river activity and some other stuff. So. I think probably the place where you have the worst, the worst confusion is at Third and East Grand as you're traveling west. You know that's because I mean you used to have, remember there you used to have two lanes there at the stoplights. It used to be two lanes going straight across to two lanes, and I think people and even if there wasn't on East Grand, yeah, like right there where the E is at. Yeah, no, that's because it's, it's still one if, lane. Right, when you even cross. if it's still one lane, people it's too wide. quite yeah. often, it, yeah. it is very wide, and you know, people treat it as if it's two lanes. So I think that's probably one of the biggest. Yeah, we used to have two two lanes going down the hill. Mm-hmm. Right, and it was it was two way. from right here, correct? Yeah, we would start the second lane there. Yes. Yeah. I, okay, so I'm not completely the same. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I, I do right. remember that. I just remember okay. that big pool of yellow paint that they painted there, so it indicated, you know, like uh, just I'll, I'll try I'll to push people push over. Yeah. yeah. It was more than just a good excuse to pour more paint on their streets. Yeah, no, I, I do remember two lanes going down that hill, and I, people still treat it as if it's two lanes quite often. It'll, you'll kind of, I, motorcycle, protect your lane, so I'm always hugging center line to keep people from running into me, and it's always, uh, you get down there and you kind of sit in left lane, and somebody kind of 
eases a little bit to your right rear, like they're going to come around you and then they stop or whatever, you know, and these ones. It's a possibility it's, uh, for a small roundabout. <laughs> with paint? <laughs> well, yeah, that's the hard part. Mm -hmm. You're going to get away with it in warm climates, but paint in Wisconsin, yeah. once it snows, it's yeah, free yeah. for all. More traffic deflectors. And I think about how creative you could get there. You could probably do lots of things with that. Do you have any idea how long a study would take for this, Dave? Uh, probably come back in October. Well, we, we've got um, a lot going on yet with the construction year, so probably we'll come back in October. Mm -hmm. I make a motion to approve a, a traffic study in no. those. I'll second. I'll second that. There's no further discussion. The committee will vote. All those in favor respond by aye. Aye. Opposed, aye. Ayes have it. Item 11. Good evening. Good evening. Mayor. Yes, thank Everybody. you. Take care. Yep, see you later. Item 11 to uh, review the proposed 2014 public works project schedule. Uh, Joel, you want to? Sure. Uh, so I'll just kind of go down the list on the side. Um, First Street North. Uh, they're finishing up, patching up where the energies are doing some lowering their gas main through there. They just got some asphalt stamping to do yet on the bike path, and then um, some topsoiling and seating to finish up there. And that project should be done. Um, 17th Avenue North, uh, we're looking at starting that in two or three weeks. And 10th Street, of course, will be finishing up then within the next two or three weeks. The safe roads to schools. Yeah. Where are we at? <laughs> I did. I did get uh, authority to advertise. So did it get out today? Or it'll get out I'm tomorrow. Not sure if we got it out today. We'll be advertising uh, for the contract for the sidewalks on Washington Twenty Eighth Clyde. Um, flat, rapid flashing lights on Eighth and Grove and bike racks, I think, for four schools. So uh, bid opening would be the, our September meeting. Um, then I have to package all that stuff, send it off, and get approval to award. So I'm hoping to get a contractor in place probably by the end of October. Maybe we could possibly, if the weather holds, get the sidewalk done. City crews would, we're going to be removing the trees that are being in the way on Washington Street probably right after we get the bids in to make sure that they're not way out of whack and we can, I don't want to rip everything up and then maybe we have to wait till spring to rebid or anything. But it's going to spill over now into um, 2015 just for the fact that the flashing, rapid flashing lights on 8th and Grove, that, those take forever to order and then you have to proof shop drawings and so they probably won't be put in until spring. So hopefully we'll get the sidewalk done but we'll be pushing winter again. And the only other thing to noteworthy I guess is chip ceiling as they're looking at between that um, the week of August 25th. Let me get a list. So Jim's gonna of course, he's going to send a list out and I think we'll distribute that to the persons. I, I, I thought it would be nice in the past, too, if something like that could be posted on the city website as well. But I mean, whatever. Yeah, we could. We can do that. Well, I can't do it. Right. Well, yeah. can do it. <laughs> Even I can't do it. I mean, that way, that way people have a place to go to or, you know, if you got, if you can even go on, um, the city's got a Facebook page or on the police department's Facebook page or something like that. That way people have many avenues with which they can find that information. So. Any other questions or anything? Okay, with that, uh, we're to item 12, and that's to review the referral list. That, that new yeah. one, 13, um, Mayor wanted us to review, before he brought it to committee, to review um, the 
city's involvement in it. Um, it's really a, well, it started out now as a fight between two businesses. They put a fence, they used to cross each other's property and they got in some disagreement, now there's a fence. One property owner put a fence across so that the other property owner can't get across. So I need a map. <laughs> Well, okay, yeah, I guess you guys look into... Yeah, we're, we're going to meet with Adam and, and Sue Schill to see what... At, at first glance, as far as I know, the city doesn't have any involvement in it other than maybe we allow a property owner to do it at his expense. All right, uh, I guess everything stays on like it is there. We only got, what, one, two, three, four right now, so... I'd like to make a referral at this okay. time if I could. And that'd be a referral to for the committee to review or update recommendations for its special assessments. Um, as we discussed with item three tonight, so like when uh, if there's city cause, you know, city did a poor job installing or if there's how how did you put it, non non standard degradation? Yeah. Is that a technical term? Abnormality. Sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's any way in circumstance. Right. Yeah. So it's some kind of a recommendation that that we could have. Yeah, I kind of look at you, Dave, as a historian. And when you leave in December, I'm to uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you'll say, well, the past, we've done this and that. And we won't know that. So it seems to me that. I, I agree with what you're saying. Um, we could create some practice because uh, I think what you have to, you don't have to deal with individual pressures or, or feeling sorry for someone and we do or we're empathetic, but the idea is that it should be equal um, because I, I feel uncomfortable saying one thing in the one month of somebody and then the next month or if our committee changes or common council members. So if we could create some type of consistency with the caveat that might be unique circumstances but you know I agree I, I'm glad you're suggesting that we do have a we call it engineering policies and procedures and Joe's making me finish it before I <laughs> leave with all, Go, these, with all these past things that I know about that to write them down and then we try to put the committee minutes right in there with them really we need to change that yeah no. going to be pretty minutes Uh, yeah, okay. Special assessments, I yeah. just did, going through my mind is we need a list of something of what uh, special assessments may just cover, I guess, what you bring it up talking about. Uh, I don't know, I guess uh, anytime you really need or a special he, as until he finishes his book there. Well, <laughs> and what we do have a, a large procedure for special assessments. I can bring it back at the committee to review for the next. Right. I guess I'm I'm just looking for you know some type of of um, city staff guidance as to what would be appropriate you know for for this committee to do in the future if you know let's just say that two years ago we did a, a street project and everything looked fine and now three years into it it starts to sink and we can't determine why. And you know the only way to you know we have to go in we have to repair it and it's determined that okay it was it was poor soil underneath you know poor soil condition underneath and the city didn't catch it or didn't realize or didn't know it um, you know do we do a fifty percent off or do we not do a fifty percent off because well the city wasn't negligent because we didn't know that it was poor soil underneath so we're not we're not on the hook for for a fifty percent reduction but. You know, maybe there was poor workmanship or craftsmanship or whatever done at the time, which led to five years down the line or three years down the line sinking of the road base. And then, yeah, okay, in that case, we'll give you a cut at 50% off, you know. Some, something along those lines that would give us some kind of guidance. So when things like this come, come back in the future, you know, yeah, okay, the place has been, you know, it's 50 years down the line. We look at it and we go, well, you know, they, they said it was... We, we see it's been chip sealed, you know, how many times, and it's repairs have been made in other places, but this has never been repaired, and it's been like this since since it was done. 
what do we do with that? You know, do we do we give a fifty percent cut on that type of thing, or do we say no, it's one hundred percent? And I think part of the conflict is when you look at each individual case. It and always sounds good. It's, it, well, each case, it's not that much money when you think of the big budget. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I'm not, I'm, I'm not looking at being penny pinching and stuff. I look at it as fairness. And and I mean, if people want to, I think though you know, we can probably have to bring it back at another meeting to, yeah, you know, right. like a, 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 yeah, my right. interpretation to bring it back for further discussion at you know next meeting or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I can supply all the, yeah. the ins and outs of our special assessments have quite, for one reason or another, I can't explain them. I've learned them through <laughs> the years. Well, oh, we do it this way and that way, and and we've written them down. So we, you can go through them all. Is it statutory, or is it just? No, oh, it's all just past practices yeah, and like policies. Right. Are changing. Like, right. We, we pretty much give people a three-year guarantee on any concrete work, we automatically just repair it if it goes bad. And, and stuff like, you know, this this book that you put, I'd like to see something like that come down as actual um, city, you know, like city ordinance. Yeah. You know, so that we have something that we can go back and say, okay, city ordinance says we've got, if it goes bad in three years, we replace it. If it goes bad in five years, we cover it. You, or you cover 50% of the cost, you know. So it's not just, you know, coming back to, but what did Dave say about the, you know, what's traditional on this? What have we done in the yeah. past? I, I want to be able to go back and, and flip it open and say, okay, page you know, three. You know, he's hiring as a high-priced consultant. That's yeah, right see, now, now, yeah, there it is. <laughs> might have to do that. Your phone might be ringing off the wall. And eventually, Dave. after we look at it yeah. and come to some consensus we share with the Common Council, right. so when a vote comes up, they can all understand why, why it was the right. recommendation was right. made. So there's no back and forth bickering about this or this or this. Yes. It's just, it's, it's right there, black and white, plain and until something else comes up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, and then we're to item 13. That's uh, to adjourn, also move. Second. A motion and second to adjourn. Committee, all those in favor, respond by aye. 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 Opposed, I have it. With that, we're done at about 7.23 or thereabouts. <sighs>